using the Wood Miser LT40 1974 edition. <laughs> Hey guys, we're back in the shop. We're at the UK table. That's what we're kind of naming it right now. Um, as you can see, it's looking pretty clean. We've wide belted it. Uh, we're at the stage now where throughout the week, what we're going to be doing is, it's actually going to be cool what we're doing is, we're going to be doing something we don't do a lot of and that's adding bow ties to the top surface. Now we've got a void here, which we've talked to the customer about and they love the idea of actually keeping the void. So what we're going to do is we're going to put a bow tie in here. We're going to put it there. You can see we've got a large trekking crack going a lot, a lot of the way through. We're going to do our normal thing where we fill it with epoxy, but we're also going to put some bow ties in here too. Um, it's a really, really cool detail. We can add to it sometimes. It obviously adds a lot of strength, um, especially when you do a different species like uh, maple. When you have a walnut table, it adds some nice contrast to the detail as well. So that's something we're going to be doing. Obviously, we've got to flip this table over and we've got to do sea channel in it as well. So we've got lots to do, obviously cutting, cutting it to size as well. So you're going to see that over the course of the video through the week when we're tackling all this. All these little cracks, they got to get touched up too, but so far table's coming really, really cool. We've got really nice book matching going on. So stay tuned. We're going to keep uh, working on this throughout the week. Okay, it's Tuesday out here. Wednesday? Wednesday. <laughs> <laughs> a little bit of winter weather came in last night, so we got our winter gear back on. It's a little chilly this morning. Uh, when I came in, I smelled some cedar and it smelled like it was nice and dry for Paul and his barrel sauna, so we're going to take it out of the kiln today. Oh, yeah. All right, not sure if our moisture meter is working too well. Everything's reading 0%, which is definitely wrong, but we're going to take everything out anyways because my ancestors told me last night that the wood was dry. All right, so if you didn't already know, we have two kilns here on site. We have our vacuum kiln, and we also have a conventional kiln. The conventional kiln is the one that we put uh, this lumber into, and we'll be pulling it out here with the telehandler. We basically just have a few racks made of four by fours, and we do have one welded steel one now, which works really well. And as you can see, the telehandler also works really well. It has a big, long, booming arm on it, which can go out about 50 feet. So it makes it really, really easy to boom right into the, the container, grab the skid or grab whatever we need and pull it out of the, the container. So what is a conventional kiln versus a vacuum kiln? The conventional kiln, very, very, very simple, has a radiator inside the kiln, which has hot water flowing through the radiator. As the air goes through the radiator, it takes the heat away from the water, transfers it to the air in the kiln. That air is then circulated around the lumber which pulls away the moisture and then at the end of the kiln is just a small vent that the heated air along with the moisture from the wood is able to be vented away from the kiln. So for us, because we have a wood, outdoor wood boiler, which we burn our sawmill scraps, it's very inexpensive to run and still does a fantastic job as long as you do your air drying properly with your stickered lumber. But when we're talking with big thick slabs, we, we do that all in the vacuum kiln because we want the best quality for that lumber. Troy's actually pulling out a bunch of old growth Western red cedar that we brought over from the team at Van Urban Timber in Squamish, BC. If you have never heard of them, you should check them out. They're quite the outfit and they specialize in Douglas fir and Western red cedar. Basically, we're gonna be building two barrel saunas using the two by six material you see here, the thicker stuff and we will be using Western Red Cedar for the first time for our Sosujiban siding that we're finally gonna be siding the front of our shop. So super excited. All right guys, we're back at Paul and Amy's old table which is for sale. Um, James has got it all sanded down. He had a few spots he had to touch up with epoxy, so this is gonna be sanded very shortly. And then we're gonna be tackling this with the Rubio Mono Coat. We're just gonna be wiping it on, wiping it off. We'll get footage of that for you. Um, you've, seen it, you've seen us do it before. It's a super easy application and we'll talk you through it. And then it's gonna be ready to go in someone's new home soon. 
Hey guys, so we got our bow ties all ready to go. We just got to clean them up a little bit from the cut. But what we did was we used our Festool router, combining with some brass bushings to follow our guide. And what that does is it makes a perfect, absolute perfect uh, mortise to key. And it's, a, it's, it's as simple as lining it up where it goes, the same way it was cut. And then what you do is you get a block on top and you're going to pound the block evenly. And that way it's pushing the whole thing down. If you take a hammer to just your, uh, your key, what's going to happen is it's going to push this end in, but this end's not going to go and then it's going to snap. So the key important thing when you're putting this in is you use your glue or your epoxy, whatever you're using, you center it, put your block on evenly, and then you're hitting your block again because it's even pressure. All right, how's it going? It's a good Monday morning here. I am ridiculously busy but I'm still gonna try and do all this wormy soft maple in five quarter today, get it on our yellow rack, sticker it, so we can get it up to Durham and dry it within the next few months here. The Using the Wood Miser LT40 1974 edition. <laughs> so Troy's just throwing a few jokes at you. The Wood Miser we have, yes, it's old, but it's not from 1974. It is from 1992, so it's definitely getting up there in age, but uh, she's still working really good, and this is one tip that I can give you that if you're starting a new business or you want to get into this, you don't necessarily need to buy a brand new machine and spend the forty, fifty, sixty thousand dollars on a machine. I was able to pick up the sawmill uh, relatively inexpensive, under ten thousand dollars, and with a little elbow grease, a few extra parts here and there, uh, it's been a fantastic sawmill for us. We were able to bring in a couple log truck loads of wormy soft maple, also called ambrosia maple, because a little beetle goes in there and leaves a little bit of a stain, which actually adds some pretty cool character to the grain of, uh, of, of the plain maple that you would normally have. So Troy is very easily, uh, looks like he's slicing up a bunch of five quarter. So we're cutting an inch and a quarter thick. And you're able to handle that pretty easily with one person. So that's specifically mostly what we use the wood miser for, sometimes in the extended mode. Long time ago, a good decision that we had was to have this stickering rack welded up. And it keeps us very organized, keeps our stickers exactly where we want them to be, 12 inches on center. If you don't know what stickers are, those are the sticks that go in between the layers of wood because we want airflow for air drying to flow through the wood and remove the moisture. So it may look like a small little pile of ugly logs, but there's some beautiful lumber on the inside. So this table here, it's made of ambrosia maple. We did this in two different glue ups. We had a section here, we had a section here, we glued it up, flattened it, and then we glued that all together. So that made it super, super easy that most of it's all sanded, just except for one glue joint. And what we're gonna do now is we're actually gonna be cutting this on the CNC in a circle. This is gonna be a 72 inch diameter table that for our client, we're cutting it out. We're just sanding it to 220 and sending it off to them. All right guys, and these are a couple slabs we have in the shop now. This is actually customer's wood. Uh, we had a meeting with them recently. We, just, we figured out how we all wanted to orientate the slabs. This is gonna be a three slab glue up. So steps for this right now is we've already laid out our rough sizes. So first thing we gotta do now is flatten it. So just because they're kind, there is a little bit of twist to them, we're gonna take them to the CNC. We're gonna flatten one side on each of the three slabs. Then we're gonna run them through the planer 
because we do have that perfect, that perfect flat surface which is going to run on the bottom. So that way all three slabs are perfectly flat. Once we do that, we're going to lay it out, figure where our cuts are going to be. We're going to cut that with the big sliding table saw. And from there, we're going to do our glue up with our Festool dominoes. So this tree's really come full circle for them. It was a tree on their property, milled up, kiln dried, and through the shop so we can make something beautiful with it. Hey, hope you had a great weekend. We're in the shop. This is a project, project that's been in here for a little bit of time, but this is for Paul and Amy. This is going to be their outside table. It's a big piece of, uh, I believe this is a big sa silver maple cookie. So super thick. It's going to clean it up. We're going to put some hairpin legs on it. We're going to flip it over, sand it up, throw some finish on it, and then take it to its new home on their deck. So you can see Troy is a man of many talents around here from dealing directly with our dealers, keeping a track on what uh, inventory they need, from sawmilling to loading and unloading the kiln, but also dressing our lumber. Virtually all of our lumber that we ship out to our dealers all across North America is dressed either on our CNC or through this jointer planer. Um, if you don't already know, we have uh, Tool Tuesdays where we highlight our machinery and the tools that we use either for the woodworking business or the lumber business and this jointer planer 37 inch wide spiral head 60 horsepower 10,000 pound beast we have featured it so check out our tool Tuesdays you can see a little bit more detail about this machine but uh, it is a sweet sweet machine it's able to surface both sides of the lumber at the same time So most of the time we build tables that are on order, custom ordered, but sometimes we like to do spec tables and that lets us have a little bit more fun. And I knew there were some really killer maple slabs hiding off in the corner that's been there for a long time. So I figured, you know what, let's make a table out of one of them. So here I'm laying out the window, which gives us a clear view of what the slab's gonna look like once we pour it and get it all squared up. We then move forward, we're able to trace the lines on, cut the edges square and we're going to pick out all the little bit of bark defects here and there and clean up the edges with the Restorer brush sander. We do like to seal our edges. Um, it basically eliminates the chance of any micro bubbles coming out of the wood as uh, the epoxy is curing. We're doing that with the Chemtech Chem 100 and the next day we're going to come in and be pouring the Chem Thick Epoxy, which is it here, which is a crystal clear, zero VOC, made in Canada epoxy. It's fantastic, full disclosure. We are a dealer for the product through our Legacy Lumber Dealers. Uh, I like to hand mix it, but sometimes I also use a drill mixer. Depends how I'm feeling. And we're going to go with about two to three drops just to give it a smoked epoxy look. I like that translucent. Uh, slightly smoked look. So let's get our mix on here and then we're going to pour this into the table. We're going to do 30 liters and then in about two days from now we're going to do another 30 liters to get to the full thickness.
How's it going everyone? Unloaded the kiln this morning, so uh, we're gonna load it up. This time all with the Serbian Mapabro that we received about three, four months ago. Um, if you go back, you can watch the video on us unloading the sea can. It was uh, quite the day. So it's been air drying for about three months now and we just kind of got under the 32% mark, which means it's good for the kiln. It's gonna be in there for about two and a half, three weeks and that should bring it down to six to eight percent right where we want it to be. All the stuff going in the kiln today is pre-sold, but uh, if you go on our website, there's a lot of slabs that are still air drying that I can put in the kiln and uh, they're ready for sale. So now we're gonna try and fill it, all of this stuff here. 